Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AXE Electronic, and today we are going to learn how to simulate MOSFETs using LT Spice. So in the previous video, we took a really brief look at MOSFETs to see maybe how they operate and what their IV curves look like or how their current depends on their voltages. Now, today we are going to learn how to simulate them in LT Spice so that in the future, whenever we start talking about MOSFET amplifiers or logic circuits, you can simulate them yourself and see exactly how they work. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So I've got my LT Spice window all opened up. I've got a new schematic ready to go. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit F2 and we're just going to type in NMOS. Okay, now NMOS is going to bring us up an in-channel MOSFET transistor, which is exactly what we want. We don't have to go into any sort of subfolders or anything like that. It's right there at the beginning for us. So I'm just going to place that right in the middle of my schematic. Now, we need a couple of other things to do a very basic simulation. Number one is that we need voltage sources. So I'm going to add a voltage source. So we do need a voltage source on our gate because remember, a voltage on our gate is what makes current go from the drain to the source. Now we also need a voltage on our drain because there has to be some kind of voltage pushing that current through the drain to the source. Because remember, we had to have a non-zero VDS in that last video in order to push current through our MOSFET. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep these two there, hit G, add a ground flag, and we're gonna add a few of these everywhere just to make sure everything is all connected up. And then we're gonna hit F3 to bring up our wire tool and get everything nice and connected. Okay, so now we've got everything nice and connected, nice and basic. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of housekeeping here. So I'm gonna call this one VGS, right? And because our source voltage is zero volts always because it's tied to ground, whatever voltage we have on our gate is equal to VGS. Okay, so we can call that there. I'm gonna call this one VDS and hit okay. Now we need to give these two values. So for the first simulation that we're gonna do, just to kind of sanity check everything, I'm just gonna plug in like a value of, let's say 10 volts. And here I'll do maybe something like five volts, okay? And let's try and simulate this. So I'm gonna do a transient analysis. This is gonna be a quick one. So I'll just do the stop time is one, start saving data at zero and do a one millisecond time step and hit okay. And we didn't get any errors. So let's see what's been happening here. Okay, so we can see that with this five volts here and our 10 volts at our drain, that we get well, not too much current flowing through here. So definitely under a milliamp. Now, the reason that we may not be getting a lot of current flowing through here is actually because of this transistor, okay? So you may notice here that I don't have any sort of model plugged into here. So this is just the very basic LT Spice transistor. But thankfully, LT Spice has quite a few transistors built in already, so we don't have to, worry, have to worry about modeling themselves. So if we right click on this transistor, we can click pick new MOSFET, and it'll open up this big list of all these different MOSFETs that it has built into it. So the one that I'm gonna use for this first one is this BSP89, okay, because I've used it before, and I just like the way that it behaves. And let's run it again and see if things change. Ah, now it looks a little bit better. So we ran it again and now our ID is looking at 1.16 amps about. So it's looking a lot better, maybe something that we expect a little bit more. We saw the same VGS and the same VDS. All right, so that is a big thing to remember is that you probably need to pick a MOSFET. And if you expand this a little bit more, you know, maybe they have the VDS that it can tolerate, so the maximum VDS. It has its on resistance in milliohms and some gate charge. But if you do need to maybe look at a different, uh, excuse me, a different parameter, you can actually look at the SPICE model here to try and sort out what it is that you're hunting for. So if maybe I'm looking for something like a threshold voltage, I can look right here. So I have this VTO is equal to 2.9. If I scroll down here, this VTO is equal to 1.6, okay? So you can kind of look at these different parameters that are inside that SPICE model if there's something a little bit more complex that you're hunting for. But if not, you can just pick one that you like and maybe see if it works or not. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, but I want to actually make these IV curves that we saw before. So instead of having time on this x-axis, I want to have a voltage. Now, LT SPICE can actually do that very easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hit delete and get rid of that simulation command because I'm, I'm done with it. I don't wanna have it anymore. 
And I'm just going to hit run again so I can go ahead and bring up this next simulation command window. So before we did transient, and that's versus time, but if we want, we can actually do a DC sweep. So if we go to DC sweep, it says compute the DC operating point of a circuit while stepping independent sources and treating capacitances as open circuits and inductances as short circuits. Yada, yada, yada. So it is going to ask us for the name of the first source to sweep. So now we're actually sweeping our sources, which is good. That's what we want. Now you'll notice that it's asking for the name, and thankfully we already gave it a name. So I'm going to just call this VGS. It's going to ask for a type of sweep. I want to do a linear sweep. So for our start value, let's just start at zero and let's stop at, let's just do 20. So 20 volts, we're gonna go all the way to 20 volts and for our increment, I'll just do 0 0.1 volts. Hit okay. And now it has started running. So this is the old result from before. Oh no, this is actually our new result as well. So our, uh, drain, or our drain voltage is always gonna be 10 volts because no matter what the current is, we set the voltage as 10 volts. But if we take a look at this current, we can see that this current actually changes versus our gate source voltage. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. So hold on, let's see. So I'll keep them side by side so you can see the schematic that we're working with. And if I take a little bit of a closer look here, we can see that we have zero milliamps until about 1.7 volts or so. So at about 1.7 volts, this thing starts conducting. So it's gonna start turning on, and then by about two volts, we have almost a linear relationship. So if I look at this whole thing, we can see that in this section right here, we have a nice linear relationship. Okay, so that's really, really good for us because we want this linear relationship if we're building something like an amplifier. Now, if we're building something like a switch, we don't want this linear relationship. So we would wanna drive it all the way over here. Okay, so maybe if we were operating this as a switch, with a VDS of 10 volts, this wouldn't be the best situation. But if we maybe have a lower VDS, then this could be a little bit better for us. But we'll look at that in more detail here in a second. So I'm gonna clean up this schematic. So I'm gonna press F8 to get my grab tool. I'm gonna move this around over here. That way it's not intersecting with much. And I'm gonna right click this. So if I right click this, we can change our sweep so I'm going to go ahead and change this to VDS instead. And we're, we'll do the same 0 to 20, and we're going to keep our VGS constant at 5 volts. So since we changed the sweep from VGS to VDS, it's going to go back to this default value for VGS, which is 5 volts. Hit OK. Make sure it took the change and hit Run. Okay, so now that we can see with our constant VGS of 5 volts, our current has this linear relationship here. So maybe if whenever we have a lower gate source voltage, we're operating just like a switch. So this MOSFET just looks like a pretty low resistance resistor. But whenever we get too high, if we get too high of a VGS, then we're gonna start entering this saturation region, okay? So if we get a little bit too high, we're gonna enter the saturation region. Not good for a switch, but really good for an amplifier. Alrighty, so now we might wanna look at a couple of curves side by side, okay? So there's a couple of ways you could do this, but my favorite way is to use a different spice parameter, okay, or a spice command. So we have our DC sweep here. So this is going to sweep our VDS from zero to 20 in increments of 0 0.1. But if you remember on our slides, we had multiple curves shown in, that, in those slides. So we wanna see maybe VGS is five, VGS is 10, and VGS is 20, or maybe three, five, and 10, or something like that. We can actually accomplish that using a spice directive. So if we hit up here at the very, very top, this dot op command, dot op, it's gonna open up this spice directive window. And if I'm not confused, I believe you can put, or press on the schematic and press S, and that'll also, also open up this spice directive, okay? You can change the justification or font size if you want to, but I'm gonna keep it as default. So we first need to tell it the parameter that we want it to sweep. So I'm gonna say dot step. Okay, so this is going to step our parameter throughout a uh, list of values that we can give it. So I'm going to say dot step. We're going to step a parameter. So I'm going to say param. And then we need to give it the name of this parameter. Okay, so we need to tell it VDS. Okay, so we're going to dot step param VDS. Now we need to tell what it is that we want to step through. So we could do something like a linear, octave, decade, things like that, but I'm just gonna do a list. So dot step param VDS, let's do list. 
and then I'm just going to do 3, 5, and 10 for now with spaces in between. I hit enter. I can just drop this anywhere here. All right, so let's try and run this and see what happens. All right, so we have got multiple things going here, but they don't look any different at all, okay? So that's probably because we're sweeping VDS at the same time. So let's change this to VGS maybe and try rerunning. All right, so they are all right on top of each other right now. So we know that we didn't do something right here. So what we didn't do right is that we didn't exactly set this up in the correct way. So in this DC value, whenever it's looking for this param, it's actually looking for something in curly brackets. So it's looking for something in curly brackets to tell us that it is a parameter. So we don't have anything in curly brackets here. So what we need to do is that instead of having this 10 for our VDS, we need to do open curly bracket, VDS, and then close curly bracket. Hit OK. Now let's give it a try. Now, we're, now we've actually got something going here. So instead of VDS here, we have this parameter. And what this does is that this fills in this parameter, VDS, with this list, and it's going to step through that list. So it's going to give us the results for all of these cases. I'm going to experiment a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and set this one to a parameter called VGS, and it should still simulate because we're still uh, going through VDS and VGS. Okay, so unknown parameter VGS, so it didn't quite know what it was. It get kicked back an error because we never mentioned it, but it ran just fine because it went ahead and ran that sweep. Okay, so we still have our VGS is this sweep from 0 to 20. Our VDS is step from 3, 5, and 10. Alrighty, so we have got that error still. So we have still got this little curve here. And we maybe want to add some labels to it, right? So we want to add some labels because we want people to know what exactly it is that they're looking at. Because right now we just see three curves, we don't know what's what. So we can actually add some labels to our graphs. So let's see. Let's figure out where this is at, okay? So if I right click here, no, we're not gonna need anything like that. So if I right click and I hit draw, and I can add text and I can actually change the color of it. Now we should have all of these colors in our palette here. So like for example, this top one, I have it in my color palette right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate with text and we know that that top one is when our VDS is equal to 10. So I'm going to say VDS is equal to 10 volts. Hit OK. And it's going to let us drop this wherever we want it. So I'm just going to set it right on top here. And let's do the same thing again. So go right click on our graph. Go to draw and then text. Again, I'm going to switch my color to red. I'm going to do VDS is equal to 5 volts. Hit enter. Press this right here, draw text, this one is our dark blue, and I'll do VPS is equal to 3 volts. Okay, so now we have those text labels, we know very clearly where everything is here. Now, one thing that you might see is that if we close this program and open it up one more time and press simulate, we're gonna lose all of these settings here. So maybe we have our plot tuned exactly the way that we want it to be. Okay, so maybe instead of going from zero to 20 volts, we want to go uh, from zero to 10. And instead of our ticks at two volts, we want our ticks at one volt, okay? So we can change it to be something like that. So maybe we wanna save this and we wanna always return this exact graph whenever we're running this. So we know how to save our schematic. We come down here and press file, save, we can actually do what's called saving our plot settings. So if we go to file, whenever we click on our plot, we can go to file and save plot settings. Okay, so if I save plot settings as, it'll do a .plt file. And now I can close this, close it one more time. If I open our recent one, okay, so this is right back where we were at. I can run it. And it's going to look exactly the same. So it's going to place these right where they belong, change the colors as they need to be, and we're going to be able to do all this other sorts of cool stuff. So if you have maybe a certain result that you want to return, you're going to send this to your friend, you want them to see that exact result, you're going to want to save these plot settings. That way it's going to return that immediately. Okay? So 
Again, we can hit file, make sure we're clicked on our or on our drawing, file and save plot settings, and it's going to go ahead and save those plot settings for us. And we can also do what's called adding a plot plane. Okay, so I'm going to right click here because maybe you want to have our VGS and we also want to have our VDS. Okay, so we can also do what's called adding a plot plane. So if we hit right click, add a plot plane, and it's going to add another plot plane for us. So before, if we wanted to have, let's see, I'll get rid of this one, delete this pane. So before, if I wanted to display two different voltages or two different currents, so right now I'm displaying current. If I wanted to display voltage on top of that, it's going to display it right on top. And it might be pretty confusing because on one side we have volts, on the other side we have amps. So it could be a little bit more confusing. So I'm going to get rid of this one. If instead I wanted to display two different voltages on a separate voltage only graph, I can right click, hit add plot plane. Make sure I'm clicked on our new plane. And then now I can come to our schematic and add these voltages. Now those voltages are added on their own graph all by themselves. You can change these uh, settings however much you want. You can add different text to these. doesn't matter. You can do all the same stuff that you could on this other plane. Now it's just entirely separate. So if there's maybe multiple things you want to show in your result, then this is a really good way of accomplishing that. Okay, so I encourage you guys to play around with this a little bit more. Maybe change your plot settings, see how they work, see what does, uh, what does stick around, what doesn't maybe play around with the step parameter, maybe even try and get a uh, VDS simulation going. So instead of ID versus VGS, which we have here, you can do ID versus VDS. And that'd give you some really good practice setting up these MOSFET simulations, picking a MOSFET and getting everything set up correctly. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Like I've said before, it really does motivate me quite a bit to see new subscribers or new thumbs up. So please, if you do enjoy it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.